Okay, friends. <clears throat> so this is the second video for uh, particle motion. Now, since I've already done one video where I spent the first couple of minutes going into some of the ins and outs of particle motion, derivative and integral relationships, I'm not doing that here. I am just jumping straight into this problem. Uh, one thing I want to warn you about, this is not a uh, released College Board question. You won't find this anywhere on their website. It was actually created by Dixie Ross, who is a master level calculus teacher in Texas. She actually was the woman who facilitated my training session 12 years ago, 15 years ago when, uh, when I went to Rice. She is a master level teacher, College Board certified and trained. And she wrote this question a couple of years ago. This is definitely going to be a push. There's um, some trigonometry in here. There's multiple particles. There's going to be a lot of places where you really need to keep up with what's going on with the big ideas. All right, so without any further delay, let's just keep going. Two particles move along the x-axis. For the time interval 0 less than or equal to t, less than or equal to 5, the position of particle r at time t is given by r of t equals 2 sine pi t over 3. The velocity of particle p at time t is given by v sub p of t equals 3t squared minus 8t plus 4. Okay, so we've got particle r, and we know the uh, position for particle r. We've got particle p, and we know the velocity for particle p. Oh, if I didn't mention it, this is on page 63 in the special topics handout. Okay, so particle, wow, what happened there? Jackie is in freak out mode. Okay, particle r, well that's not much better. Okay, particle r, we have the position is going to be 2 times sine of pi t over 3. And then over here, we've got particle p. And what we know is the velocity v sub p of t equals 3t squared minus 8t plus 4. Okay, that's what we know. We've got particle r, we know position, we've got particle p. We know velocity. Okay, part A. For the time interval 0 less than or equal to t, less than or equal to 5, find all times t during which particle p is moving to the right. So here's what you need to know. If particle p moves to the right, then the velocity of particle p has to be positive. Well, how am I going to figure out where 3t squared minus 8t plus 4 is positive? What you're going to do is you're going to do the number line test. And in order to do the number line test, yep, yeah, okay. So if you're going to do the number line test, what we're going to do is we're going to first set 3t squared minus 8t plus 4 equal to 0. And I'm going to factor. Well, the way that you are going to factor, that's up to you. Do the box, do the mama diamond, whatever. You're going to get 3t minus 2 times t minus 2 is equal to 0. Okie dokie. So we do that. I'm going to do a number line test. I'm doing this for my velocity function. At time t equals 2 thirds, the velocity is equal to 0. At time t equals 2, the velocity is equal to 0. Because I'm on the restricted interval, t equals 0 to t equals 5, I'm not going to look before t equals 0, and I'm not going to look after t equals 5. What I need to do now is pick values of t in these different intervals and plug them into your velocity expression, either the original or the factored, and see what the sign comes out to be. So for example, if I pick t equals 1, then I've got, sorry, 3 times 1 minus 2 times, what's going on there? 1 minus 2. This guy here, 3 times 1 minus 2 is positive. 1 minus 2 is negative. I get a negative value. I'm going to get a negative value for any value of t I select between t equals 2 thirds 
and t equals 2. You can repeat that again for a value between 2 and 5. What you're going to get is positive values. You can do that again for a value between 0 and 2 thirds. You're also going to get a positive value. So where is the velocity positive? Where are we moving to the right? I'd want to say particle P moving to the right. Okay, for let's see, clearly on the interval zero to two thirds, but be careful at T equals zero, the velocity is positive. But at time two thirds, you're not positive. The velocity is equal to zero. You're not moving to the right. And on this interval two to five, take a second to think about your endpoints here. At t equals two, your velocity is zero. At t equals five, your velocity is positive. That's gonna be your final answer. I'm just looking at the scoring rubric that I put together for this. And what did I think? I thought that this is possibly worth three points. Again, this isn't a College Board question. Um, so one point for making the connection that the velocity is positive. One point for coming up with t equals two thirds and t equals two. And then one point for the final interval for a grand total of three points. Okay, let's keep going. In part B, at time t equals 1, determine if each particle's speed is increasing or decreasing. Well, what do we know about speed? Remember, to determine if speed is increasing or decreasing, you look at the sign for both the velocity and the acceleration. Sign's the same means speed is increasing. Signs different. Speed is decreasing. So for each particle, we're going to have to have a conversation about the signs of velocity and acceleration at time t equals 1. Well, let's look at particle p. That's probably the easiest one here. You've got 3t squared minus 8t plus 4. The acceleration, we know acceleration is the derivative. Well, that's going to be 6t minus 8. The velocity at particle p at time 1 is 3 times 1 squared minus 8 times 1 plus 4. This is 3 minus 8 plus 4. That's a negative number. The acceleration is 6 times 1 minus 8. That's 6 minus 8. That's a negative number. So I would say speed of particle p is, what's it doing? It's increasing at t equals 1 because your velocity and acceleration are both positive. Okay, that is particle P. Okay, particle R, you're going to do the exact same work, except you've got to remember that for particle R, what you know is the position. So you've got 2 sine pi t over 3. To find the velocity, you need the derivative. Now, you might first look at this and say, oh gosh, the derivative of 2 times sine of stuff, I'm going to have to use the chain rule. True, that's correct. But then to take the derivative of pi t over 3, maybe you're thinking that you need a quotient rule. Well, let me recommend to you right now rewriting this as pi over 3 times t. These are the same, and you're probably less tempted to use a quotient rule here because the pi over 3 is a constant. The derivative is 2 times cosine pi over 3 times t times chain rule says take the derivative of the inside pi over 3. The acceleration involves another derivative. Well, you're taking the derivative of 2 times cosine of stuff times pi over 3. The 2 and the pi over 3 are constants. 
the derivative is going to be 2 times negative sine of pi over 3 times t times pi over 3 for the derivative of the inside, that's the chain rule, times another pi over 3, that's this pi over 3. Okay, stay with me. We're going to be okay. If I look at the velocity of particle r at time 1, that's 2 times cosine of pi over 3 times 1, well that's just pi over 3, times pi over 3. Pi over 3 is in the first quadrant. Pi over 3 is really 60 degrees. If I were to draw my triangle, the cosine side is positive and the sine side is positive, so my velocity must be positive. The acceleration is negative 2 times the sine of pi over 3 times pi over 3 times pi over 3. I've got a negative sine of pi over 3 we established as positive times positive times positive is negative. The velocity of particle r is positive. The acceleration of particle r is negative. So I'd say that the speed of particle r, what's that doing? Speed of particle r is decreasing. When is it decreasing? At t equals 1. Why are we decreasing? Because v sub r of 1, the velocity and the acceleration, have different signs. Oh, let me squeeze that up a little bit. So that's the work I would be looking for here. Yep. Okay. Um, in terms of points, it's, it's hard to say what the College Board would do. This isn't really a College Board question. You might argue that they're going to say for particle P, one point for finding the acceleration. Maybe one point for considering the signs of the velocity and the acceleration at time t equals one. Maybe one point for your conclusion. Now I think over here there's probably one point for finding the velocity, one point for finding your acceleration. We had to find derivatives in both cases. One point for considering the signs and one point for the justification. There is no way the College Board would award one, two, three, four, five, seven points for a question like this. Again, this isn't a College Board question. This is something that a really smart lady made up, and we are going to go with that. The, um, whatchamacallit, the points, that's something that I'm adding in there just so that we can have some conversation. All right, let's keep going. Okay, in part C, we're told if the distance between the particles is zero at time t equals three, determine an expression for p of t, the position of particle p at time t. Okay, hold on a minute now. What's going on? We've got particle p and we've got particle r, and the distance between them is zero. Well, if they're both moving on the x-axis, and I told you that at time t equals 3, particle p is right here, and oh, by the way, particle r, the distance between particle p and particle r is going to be 0, that means that p and r are actually in the exact same place. So the position of particle p and the position of particle r are exactly the same at time t equals 3. And you might say, okay, well, how the heck does that help? I don't have a position function for particle p, but you do have a position function for particle r. So if I use that position function, what's the position of particle r at time 3? That'll be 2 times the sine of pi over 3 times 3. That's 2 times sine of pi sine of pi is zero, so at time three, the position of particle r is equal to zero, okay? They want me to determine an expression for 
the position of particle P, what I know is this, that the position of particle P at any particular time is going to be the position at the one time I know where particle P is located, that's gonna be at time three, plus the integral from three to T of the velocity function that velocity function is 3t squared minus 8t plus 4 with respect to t. We talked about this at the start of video number one. This is your fundamental theorem of calculus. The value of the function at this point is equal to the value of the function at this point plus the integral of your velocity from 3 to t. Now, really, if I want to be a good calculus teacher, and we talked about this in class today, if your limit of integration is t, you shouldn't be using that as your variable. It's going to get confusing. So change all those t's to x's. So 3x squared minus 8x plus 4 and integrate with respect to x. Well, the position of particle 3 is, uh, of the particle is 0. Plus, I need to integrate 3x squared minus 8x plus 4. At this point in the course, that should be easy. x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x from, oh, not 0 to t, from 3 to t, you're going to get, now you plug in the t, t cubed minus 4t squared plus 4t minus big parentheses, 3 cubed minus 4 times 3 squared plus 4 times 3. This is your position function for particle p. You can simplify if you want to. Again, I think it's foolish to spend time doing a calculation like this when time is, uh, time is essential here. In terms of points, here's what I think. I think one point for determining the position of, I know I wrote this as particle r, but remember we're told that at time three they're the same. So one point for finding the position of particle P at time three, probably one point for your setup here using the fundamental theorem of calculus, maybe one point for the antiderivative, that's an important calculus skill, and likely one point for this final expression for a grand total of four points. Again, maybe that's how they award points. I don't know for sure. All right, let's keep going. Part D, part D, we're told set up, but do not evaluate. Oh, I love those. Set it up, but don't worry about it. An expression for the average distance between the two particles on the interval one less than or equal to T less than or equal to four. I want the average distance average distance for one less than or equal to t less than or equal to four. This word average in calculus is an important word. It tells you a lot. The way we find average is you do one over four minus one, the integral from one to four. Whatever the function is that you are trying to evaluate or find the average of, that's what you would do. 1 over b minus a, the integral from a to b. Now, I need the distance between particle p and particle r. Let me draw a little picture here. Here's particle p. Here's particle r. Could be at any time. Doesn't really matter. One thing you might think is, well, that distance is going to be p minus r. Right? p minus r, or maybe you're thinking r minus p. Well, here's the problem. We don't know where P and R are located on the x-axis. P could be on the left of R. P could be on the right of R. When you find distance, normally you do right minus left. Distance needs to be positive or zero. The way that you can ensure that happens is to use the absolute value of P minus R. That'll give you the distance between the points. So the average distance will be one over four minus one the integral from one to four of p of t minus r of t dt. I don't need to worry about evaluating this. This is not an evaluation question. It is simply going to be a setup question. 
So I would think that probably one point for coming up with your integrand, one point for having the correct limits with the constant in place for a total of two points. Okay, we've got one more to go. We've done A, B, C, and D. Here comes E. Give yourself some space, friends. For the time interval zero less than or equal to t less than or equal to five, find all times t during which the two particles travel in opposite directions. Okay, if you're traveling in opposite directions, that means one particle's traveling to the right, the other one is traveling to the left, so your particles are doing this, or you're moving this way. Either way, you need one particle to have a positive velocity, you need the other particle to have a negative velocity, and we've got to consider that it could be they're moving away from each other or they're moving towards each other. Okay, well, what do we know? If you remember from earlier, so this is part, uh, part E, for particle P, we had this number line. I'm going to redraw it over here. From zero to five, t equals two thirds, t equals two, we were positive, negative, positive. I want to double check that, make sure I'm not lying to you all. And that's what the velocity for particle P looks like. What we need now is we need to talk about the velocity of particle R. Well, particle R we know the, was it the position function? Okay, we know that the position function was two times sine of pi over three times t. What I need is the velocity of particle r. Well, that's the derivative, two cosine pi over three t times pi over three. And what I wanna do is just what we did over here before, I wanna build a number line test. To do that, I'm gonna set the velocity equal to zero. Now this is a little scary. Two times cosine pi over three t times pi over three. Well, that's the same as two pi over three cosine of pi over three t equal to zero. That's a messy three. If two pi over three times all this stuff equals zero, it must mean that cosine of pi over three t is equal to zero. Where is the cosine of an angle equal to zero? What must be true is that your angle, pi over three times t, is equal to pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, and so on and so on and so on. Now, you're trying to solve for t. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply both sides by three. Three times pi over three t is pi t. 3 pi over 2, or 9 pi over 2, or 15 pi over 2, or an infinite number of other possibilities, and then divide by pi, or if you'd like, multiply by 1 over pi, and you get t equals 3 over 2, 9 over 2, or 15 over 2, or a whole bunch of other values. Keep in mind, I'm only interested in the time interval zero to five. So I'm only gonna select values of t that are between zero and five. Three over two is 1.5, that works. Nine over two is 4.5, that works. But 15 over two is 7.5, that's too big. So are all the values that come after. So the only ones I'm gonna consider are three over two and nine over two. I'm gonna make myself a number line. Here's three over two, here's nine over two, here's t equals five, and here's t equals zero. And we're gonna do the number line test again. Be careful though, you're the, what you're looking to test, you're testing values for the velocity of particle r. And the velocity of particle r is given by 2 pi over 3 times the cosine of pi over 3t. 
So a nice convenient value between 0 and 3 over 2. How about t equals 1? 2 pi over 3 times cosine of pi over 3. Cosine of pi over 3, you're in the first quadrant, that's positive. 2 pi over 3 times that must be positive. Pick a nice value between 3 over 2 and 9 over 2. 3 over 2 is 1.5. 9 over 2 is 4.5. I'm going to pick t equals 3. 2 pi over 3 times cosine of pi over 3 times 3. Pi over 3 times 3 is pi. The cosine of pi is negative, so this has to be negative. Now, pick a value that comes after 9 over 2. It is okay to actually select t equals 5 if you'd like. You're going to get 2 pi over 3 times cosine of pi over 3 times 5. Now, this one's maybe a little trickier. Pi over 3 is really 60 degrees, times 5 is 300 degrees. 300, well, here's 0, 90, 180, 270. You're down here in the fourth quadrant. What do we know about the cosine? The cosine is going to be positive. Let me draw that a little more clearly. Your cosine is positive. 2 pi over 3 times that is positive. You have positive values. Oof. We are almost there, my friends. Hang on. To wrap this question up, and I know we've already done a whole lot of work, I want to look at these two number lines side by side. We've got the velocity of particle P, and we've got the velocity of particle R. The important values were t equals 0, t equals 3 over 2, t equals 9 over 2 and 5, and my number line here went positive, negative, positive. You're looking for places, intervals, where particle P and particle R have different signs. Now, if I had thought about this maybe a little more carefully, I would have drawn it to scale. What I know is that on the interval 0 to 2 thirds, my velocity for particle P is positive, and the velocity for particle R is also positive at the same time. So let me actually try drawing this again, and I want to put everything to scale. Sorry. Here's t equals 0. Here's t equals 5. 2 thirds lives here. 3 halves is slightly to the right of that. Here's 2. Here's 9 halves. Particle P, I'm going to put above the axis. Particle R, I'm going to put below. Particle P has positive velocity from 0 to 2 thirds. Particle R has positive velocity from 0 to 3 halves. Particle P has negative velocity from 2 thirds to 2, and then positive velocity from 2 to 5. Particle R has negative velocity from 3 halves all the way to 9 halves, and then positive velocity from 9 halves to 5. Okay. If I look at this in these different intervals, you're looking for where particle P and particle R have different velocities. From 0 to 2 thirds, they're both positive, but on the interval 2 thirds to 3 halves, you have different signs. Velocity of particle P is negative, velocity of particle R is positive. The next interval, the next overlap interval is 3 halves to 2, they're both negative. The next interval is from 2 to 9 halves, one's positive, one's negative. So from 2 to 9 halves I have different signs, and from 9 halves to 5 I have the same sign. That's going to be your final answer. Um, we're running low on time, I'm not even going to try determining where the points would come from. Um, Sorry for a little bit of a rocky end here, but the idea is you've got to compare the two number lines to figure out velocity of particle P 
and velocity of particle r, and putting them on one number line with things spaced out appropriately, it's a little easier to determine where you're going to have same signs and different signs. I um, hope that helped. If necessary, go back, watch that again, and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye.